Welcome back into another episode of Rock Boys Football. We are continuing with our preseason team previews as we were all closer to the 2021 season. We're switching from the Big 12. We've been hanging around the Big 12 a lot. We're going to the Florida Gators in the SEC. One of my brother's favorite teams, and we disagree on them. So this we disagree on this team pretty good. So this should be a good episode. Um, I'm going to kick it right off to Dill. And Dill, let us know what you think about this Florida Gator team and, and what do you think they can do this season? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I love the direction of the Florida Gators. I, what's tough, I mean, just looking at them on the whole is they're going to have to get through Georgia if they want a shot at the SEC title. And that seems like a very tall task because as we've talked about in the past, Georgia seems like they're, it's kind of got to be their year. Like, it seems like they're the most talented team in the country, uh, bringing in a quarterback who you can trust. So Florida's got their hands full with them. I, I realistically, I don't, I don't see them beating Georgia, although I, I don't see them not like being able to play with them because starting it off, I think Emory Jones is exactly what Dan Mullen wants. That's what he's liked his, in his, in his past with Tebow and uh, Dak Prescott at Nick Mississippi Fitzgerald. State. So when, yeah, so when, yeah, guys, when yeah. he's put points up as a head coach, he's had an athletic quarterback who can, run the ball 20, 30 times a game. And that seems to be kind of what Emory Jones can do. A very good athlete, but also has like really good run instincts. So he's like, you can like straight give him direct snaps and just, I mean, it's not really a direct snap when it's quarterback, but design runs without like a QB power type system without not just like relying on scrambling like a Johnny Manziel. So <laughs> for me, you, you bring in him in, I think, he fits Dan Mullen a little better than than uh, Kyle Trask did, and and I think this the offense. I mean, I, I like the direction they can go with Emory Jones. Having said that, they're losing all their talent on the uh, outside, which hurts. And I mean, not just like talent; they're losing some incredible players. So I do I see them being quite as good as they were last year? Probably not. But I don't think the drop off is going to be as big as some people including yourself think yeah I think I, when I think about this Florida team is I think overrated uh, I don't think I, I I don't think they'll be as bad as maybe I, I let on sometimes but I don't think they're going to be that good I don't think they have a chance against Alabama I don't think they have a chance against Georgia every other team I think they have a chance in the SEC they don't play oh, they'll have and a I'm, shot against Bama because they're going to be able to score on them I think i my, my problem with Florida is I think they're one-dimensional. I don't think Emory Jones hasn't shown enough that he can he can lead a team down the field consistently through the year. We just haven't seen that. We haven't seen him play much in general. He's kind of been a gadget guy. But I just – I'm worried that he, he, can't, he can't do that. And what happens when your team that's really one-dimensional is just it's hard to move the ball. People load the box up, make you do stuff you don't want to do. It's hard to move the ball, especially in the SEC like that. And it's not like they're going to be just overpower, overpowering teams like Alabama or teams like Georgia um, through the run game. That being said, I think their run game is going to be really, really good. And I think it's going to be really good because they have a lot of different guys who can do it. I see them having two running backs in the backfield plus Emory Jones. This running back room might be the best in the country. And so I think they can get to run the ball really well. I just don't know if they're going to get to pass really well. And I think that's what's going to hold them up. Yeah, and I mean, just to uh, go more into their offense, I think their offensive line, I don't worry about them. I think they're returning three out of the five. And yeah, and they were pretty solid last year, so it doesn't make me think like you're going to get a massive drop-off. It's not like they were losing like bona fide NFL stars type players. Five Stone Forsyth, who I think is honestly really good. I was surprised to see him fall in the draft. I think he was really good for them. He, I don't think he's like – the, like a left tackle athlete but like yeah you're right I mean he should be able to be a productive guard or right tackle kind of player in the NFL but I don't think you're losing to so much that you're not going to be able to replace and you have three guys with a lot of experience coming back along with the fact that Florida's been a very good recruiter with Dan Mullen so I don't worry about that unit the unit you do have to worry about is that uh wide receiver tight end group I think the one of the big issues is they're losing a tight end in Kyle Pitts who's probably the best tight end college football's ever seen 
or at least right up there. And you're replacing him with Kenmore Gamble, who if you watch that game against Oklahoma, there were some massive struggles there. And it was mainly just catching the ball. And, and that, that just can't happen. So you better – I think they really got to hope that he – can really step it up and, and catch the ball more consistently and, and help them out in the pass game. Cause yeah, and I know you'll get into it, but that wide receiver room is also decimated and really only returning Jacob Copeland, who's a guy who consistently was catching the ball and being productive for them. Yeah. I think, I think they're going to have to lean on Jacob Copeland significantly. Obviously they lose Coney, they lose Pitts and they lose Grimes three guys who are, who are legit NFL guys. And, and made that offense work. I mean, if you watch the film on Florida, that offense ran through Pitts and Tony. Trevon Grimes was a nice, nice add along, but it really no, was the other two. Their offense they was getting the ball to Kyle Pitts and getting the ball to Kadarius Tony. And I don't blame them. Both those guys are just phenomenal. Um, they do have that Justin Shorter who transferred in from Penn State. He didn't really see the field much last year just because that wide receiver room was just so good. I think they're going to need something out of him too. He has like the traits that he's former top 10 overall uh, prospect. And so they're going to need some out of him. And Emory Jones, I, again, I don't mean to like rag on him too much, but he's going to need help. He's not going to be able to kind of bless you. I think um, <laughs> anyways, um, I think, uh, I th- it's tough. I think uh, I think they're gonna. I think I think they need those guys to step up. And yeah, then, but they. I mean, again, I know, and I'm kind of the one who's a little harder on this. Like when you have big talent to replace, like it's hard to just say, "Oh, well, they've recruited and they have talent," because they do. It's like Xavier Henderson, who should be stepping in, was a big time top top seventy recruit, I believe, and obviously Justin Shorter is a. I uh, have really big time talent too. So it's like you have three guys in Copeland, Henderson, and uh, Just Shorter, me. particularly, who are like, okay, so maybe these three can do it. They have the talent, but I, I, it, I yeah. it's super concerning to me when you lose two. You like, saw that, legitimate you saw that in the, you saw players. that in the bowl game. You, I mean, you did. You definitely you, those did. three guys sat out, and that offense stunk. I mean, that, oh, that's an OU defense that uh, that were they were good, but they weren't great, and that offense couldn't move the ball. No. Dropping passes, it looked like everything was out of rhythm. I get it. Kyle Trask has been working with the ones, now he's working with the twos, but it just looked. I thought it was a bad look on Kyle Trask because it just kind of showed how much Kyle Trask yeah. was relying on those guys, and oh, it maybe one got a thing bit that's explosive. encouraging about that game though was. The only positive things that happened happened under the rain. Under Emory Jones. Jones. Yeah, I agree. And when he came in, he gave him something. Because, like, he comes in, they start running the ball better. Yes. Everything seemed loosened up in the pass game. The only issue he was having was guys were dropping balls and seemed like left and right on him. And and then to me, it's like I saw enough of him. It's like, damn, he can throw the ball at a high enough level to complement what he's going to be able to do in the run game. I don't think he is a – I'm trying I'm like a guy who who isn't gonna be able to move the ball at all downfield. I don't think he's gonna be a big time downfield passer, but yeah, I think he's gonna be good enough to to make the throws he needs to, and combine that with a coach who loves being creative in the running game with quarterbacks. I think they could be a. They're not gonna be what they were last year, of course. Like that was one of the best offenses ever, just because you have two of the better pass catchers who stepped foot in the uh, the game last year, so. I don't see them being quite as, but I don't think the drop offs going to be as big as as people think because they think their their running game is going to be far more improved based on what Emory Jones is going to be able to do, and they're keeping their backfield as you referenced to the super talented bunch, and, and they played well. Damon Pierce was really solid for them last year. Let me talk about the backfield. I've I've done a lot of reading about this backfield because. I, it, Okay, I'll touch on what you said about Emory Jones first. I think that is the storyline of this offense in general for Florida is can Emory Jones throw the ball effectively enough where it's not like it's a one-dimensional offense. Now, I'm not saying Emory Jones needs to be Kyle Trask. I'm not saying he needs to be a, a Trevor Lawrence, but I'm saying he you got to be able to – it makes me think about like Kentucky with Lynn Bowden. Like Limbo could not. Oh, please. Yeah, no, I know. But, but him in that practice. All I'm saying is it needs, it needs to be closer to an actual quarterback than it is. And we haven't really seen Emory Jones didn't really come in. Was he's not, not 
normally wasn't like an actual quarterback. It was a lot of different packages. Well, he wasn't even really playing last year. So yeah, so like, sure. that's just the story of that is, is how well can Emory Jones throw the ball and how well can they move the ball through the air with Emory Jones. But you didn't think you, you saw anything in that bowl game in terms of being a pretty – I mean, he threw some very good passes. Like, yeah, I think he was getting hurt talk. by drops. Yeah, so, yeah, I, again, I, I, what, what it is, and I think – Whenever Emory Jones touched the field yes last year, it favored him because everyone was thinking about Kyle Trask. When Emory Jones comes in, okay, they're we're they're cute on the run. Yeah, it's a different now, offense for sure. When, when Emory Jones is a full time quarterback, they're not going to be as cued in as the run because they know they have to throw the ball at some point. Anyways, that's a storyline. I don't think neither of us really know. I all I'm saying is I'm just questioning that ability because if they can't do it, it's going to be really hard to score on some of those top teams. Now, let me tell you about this running back room that I'm – I might be the best running back room in the country, really, depth-wise. They have five guys who are very good. You Georgia? Saw, okay, that's – okay. Yeah, Georgia might have a little gripe with that. That's fair. Um, Talent-wise, this team just lines right up with them. Obviously, Damian Pierce and Luke Davis were their guys last year, but they have Lorenzo Lingard and Demarcus Bowman were both former five-set recruits. I mean, they are both certified ballers, and they just haven't really uh, – Lingard was at Miami, kind of just didn't really work out there. Transfers to Florida and, and didn't play much last year, which I was a little concerned about. Demarcus Bowman went to Clemson, played two games, and decided to opt out the rest of the season and transfer. Demarcus Bowman is legit. He was the best running back in Florida. I think he's the play, state player of the year in Florida, five-star recruit. He's actually rated over Tanks Bigsby in 24-7 power rankings as a recruit. Only B. John Robinson and that TCU kid were, were ranked higher than him. Um, I think he's going to be really good. Uh, so you have five guys who can in a Naquan right. And so you have five guys who can carry the ball with Emory Jones. Like, that's a really talented backfield. And so that run game is going to be electric. So it's going to come down to how well can they throw the ball. And if they can throw the ball, like, that's going to open it up for the run game and vice versa. That's how that offense is going to move. And so I think what we can chalk this up to – and, 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 and kind of a summary is how good can Emory Jones be as a pocket passer? How, how well can he move? Not, not even as a pocket passer. How well can he throw the ball through the air? If that offense can move the ball through the air at a decent rate, that offense is going to be much better than I think it will be. I just have yeah. a lot of question marks about it. Let's move over to the defense because there's a lot of guys I want to uh, talk to. There's a lot of guys this, I know you like. There's so going to be some vicious disagreement because oh. I know you hate this defense. You know, they suck. They were bad last year, and they were. They just didn't tackle people for whatever reason. Now, I, I, I don't – like, Todd Grantham has generally been a very good coordinator, yeah. and I You're think happy. there's a reason he kept his job because I think any other coach in the world is getting canned for, for what he put out there last year. When I look at what this team's going to be able to do, they're bringing back two pass rushers in Zachary Carter and Brenton Cox in particular, who I think is vastly underrated. I think they're going to be able to get after people this year because when you have two Diaz who both of them are good, and, and I think Brenton Cox could be a first-round pick. I think he's that talented. Mm-hmm. And I think he has better pass rush ability than – it seems like people give him credit for because he does. He's not an. He doesn't rely on athleticism. Granted, he has it. Oh, he's polished. But he, he's polished. But yeah. he's like yeah. just an ultra good pass rusher in my mind. So when you have a guy who's gonna, I think he's gonna dominate this year. I, I don't. I think that defense is gonna get way better. I think that defensive line, Antonio Sheldon, will help him a little bit. I don't think. I don't think a ton because I don't love what he does. He's kind of a space eater, old school throwback guy. But they could use that. I mean, they they had issues stopping the run. So we'll see what they can do. I I mean, but I I like its chance of getting better because they're bringing back their best guys in Cox, Miller, and Kyrie Elam. So you're getting your three guys. Don't worry about Zachary Carter, who's also Zachary. Yeah, that's that's for sure. So it's like you you're getting your guys back who who were productive for you. and with give Todd Grantham a shot with a year, I, I don't know. I like I kind of like what they're gonna possibly be able to do. So yeah, what this what I saw in this defense last year as I as I kind of watched them, I watched the Texas A and M game, which was a problem. Um, they, they they're talented. Brenton Cox, I'm not gonna argue. Brenton Cox is is a legit could be a first round talent. He's a first round talent. Zachary Carter is also an NFL guy. Ventral Miller at the linebacker spots phenomenal. 
And then I, I'm excited to see Gervin Dexter. I've been reading. He's got some high hopes, so we'll see what, what he can do. He's a former five-star. Uh, not former, 2020 um, five-star. Played a little bit last year. Obviously tough for, for a true freshman to come in and, and make some noise, having limited spring camp um, and, and limited summer practice and fall camp. I'm excited to see what he can do. But my problem with this Florida team, and I'm not saying it's not fixable. I'm just saying it was a problem. It's just It was kind of just a lack of toughness and attitude. We just talked about Iowa State on the last episode. Florida was the opposite of that. Didn't yeah. see a lot of effort. Didn't see a lot of toughness. So it's kind of like Iowa State is very, not very talented, but very gritty and tough, and they had a good defense. Florida, on the other hand, is very talented, but I just didn't see any grittiness. They let teams, teams beat them down. Like, teams yeah. beat them up and they that. ran the ball on them. Isaiah Spiller was yeah. just running, running people over, and, and it, it, at some points it just looked like Florida just didn't want to tackle them. Yeah, so that's a problem. And if they can clean that up, I'm not saying this defense can be bad. Like I actually, I actually, the talent wise, like the guys you mentioned, Ventra Miller, Zach Carter, Brent Cox, Antonio Sheldon, whatever, Gervin Dexter, I'm excited about. Obviously, Kyrie Elon is very good. I'm excited for those guys. I just, I need to see, yeah. I need to see like that culture change. And we're, I mean, looking at it, we're gonna find out September 18th when they play Alabama. Alabama comes to the swamp, and we're gonna see kind of what they're about. Uh, and, and kind of what has changed in the last year because they needed a change. And so, yeah, that'll kind of do it on the defense. Um, uh, it's a, uh, To sum it up, it's a very talented group. I think they got some guys who, who got some – I guys. mean, in my opinion, they just – they got very fortunate to keep everybody was very good. I think they kept Carter and Cox both really pretty solid. And Ventral Miller, I'm kind of surprised he came back at this rate, but, like, lucky for them he did. And – Kyrie Elam, another like probably the best player on that defense last year. So you maybe get a little better season out of like a Trey Dean at safety, who who seemed like he may have been coming on later. When I mean, he seemed mm-hmm. he had a good game against Bama. Had that pick, fortunately he fumbled it when uh Devontae Smith or not Devontae Smith, but uh I'm not sure he lit him off. Like, but that's like the those type of plays. If like trading can make them more consistently and be more stalwart for them, like those are big plays. He's a big talent. He's just he's got to play more steady. We're we're like a couple plays away from from Florida being a playoff team last year. Uh, LA, yeah, because they, they hung. They, they, they actually shouldn't have lost to Texas A and M. They shouldn't have lost to Texas A and M. And they they nobody probably, looked as good against Bama as they did realistically. No, and it's not like sure. they were in Florida, Bama's league, but Bama was killing everybody with the exception of Florida, who actually kind of fought them. Which is like, gives me like, okay, this team's like, they have some talent. It's just at times they had, I mean, that LSU game had some huge missteps, like the, the shoe throw hurt really bad. And I don't so want to like, start on, can I say a little spiel on Bama on? Hopefully you can clean up those mistakes, but yeah, the talent's there and and you're going to say something bad about Dan Mullen. I don't okay. care. I I'm going to save it at the end. I'm gonna save he's it. An ex- unquestionably a great head coach. Like, you not being able to see that makes me question your, your whole ability to watch football at a, like, non-kindergarten level. So, uh, say what you want to say about him. I'll so I'm going to see it in because I want to talk about the football first. Because all because they're too aggressive and oh, they I'm get saying, in I'm, fights. Like, I'm saying a positive thing first about Florida. You use more of that probably. I'm saying, I'm saying what, I, what I saw is, is Texas a and won by a field goal. Florida was in control of that game for most of the game. They probably mm-hmm. nine times – and that's at Texas A&M in College Station. They beat Georgia. <laughs> too many fans there. That wasn't fair. That was not actually. <laughs> I actually don't get that. Like, so half it's like some people were playing with no pins, and then literally Texas A&M sold out that game. That was so crazy. Dan Mullen was ready to kill everybody yeah. after that. <laughs> classic, classic Dan Mullen just complaining. Anyways, did complain a lot last year. So much. LSU, <laughs> they shouldn't have lost that game. That was a weird game. Obviously, that field goal at the end was huge. Um, the they shoot probably, throw. The shoot throw. They actually. That's actually true. They literally lost the game because of the shoot throw. That. And then Alabama was a one score game easily. That's, I mean, that was the best team we saw. That was the best team in college football last year. They and don't fumble they that pick. Close. Who knows? Who knows? They may yeah, have no, they played, they played that game really well. And then obviously Oklahoma bowl game, they just didn't want to play. 
scrap so, it. They didn't so, have any players I mean, there. That doesn't count. Those three losses were all just like super, super marginal losses. There wasn't one game where they were like, okay, you don't belong. So this team is good. I'm not saying this team is bad, but they do lose a lot of talent. And that's the problem is they're kind of losing the guys who got them there. And I'd say that's Pitts, Tony, and Trask. So that that's my biggest concern. My the thing I do like though is I I think Emory Jones, while not playing like Trask, I think they might have a far better offense than people think, just because I think this is Dan Mullen's style. And I, I do believe in that with college football. Like coaches are super important and they run the show. And if Dan Mullen has the guys he wants, which is mm-hmm. certainly uh oh, why am I Emory Jones like and I, I like what they, they can possibly do. And I think the defense yeah. is the big reason I think that's going to be way better. I just don't see it being what it was last year. I think it's a really talented team. And it would, Dan, it, yeah. The problem with that no. defense was just like, it, it just, it, and I hate to say it, but it just really just was kind of not tough enough. Of grit, yeah, not tough, tough enough. Bad culture. Um, and yeah, and I think I final statement before we kind of go into our, our projections. Emory Jones is probably the best quarterback you could ask for for what you, what play what the personnel you have next year because you don't have those receivers next year. In fact, you're losing pretty much all your your effective wide receivers outside of Jacob Copeland. Yeah. So I mean, the offense is going to be different. How how good can that offense be? Is going to be tough. We'll see. Um, I'm not optimistic. So you knew when you go up against a team like Georgia, Alabama, like. You're not going to be able to run the ball down their throats like you might a Kentucky or a Tennessee at Vanderbilt. So we'll see. Let's get into kind of like some little prop bets, take a peek at, at, uh, at some of our, our – I just want to say I'm very interested to see how they're going to come in against Alabama because I, I don't see this Alabama team as one of the better ones because no, like they're returning guys on defense who can play, but as a whole the unit stunk last year. So I don't necessarily see why it's going to be much better. Uh, and obviously, there's some big guys on. on we'll the see. I mean, about too. I mean, the offense is going to be totally different. Like, there's nothing going to look even similar. The problem is Bryce Young is the number one recruit in the country, or the number one quarterback in the country from that class. I literally rated higher than DJ Uigale, <laughs> DJ from Clemson. Um, and so, like, I don't necessarily see the quarterback play being the problem, but I do see like, okay, you're losing three of your cornerstone offensive linemen for the last two, three years. You lose some before in the last two years, you lost your four best receivers that you've seen in a really all were first round picks, I believe. So you lose a lot. And obviously Najee Harris. So that, that Alabama team is going to look different, but Florida, um, the Florida to take, to get into the playoffs is plus 1200. Probably not taking that. I, I just think Georgia and Alabama are the better. Team. I think the road's too hard. And, and, and yeah. the main reason is I think they Georgia. would have a better shot if they were coming from the other side. Playing like from the A&M. West. A&M. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, see, I don't I – don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, I wish they were playing A&M this year just because it would be a fascinating battle between the two of us. Yeah, it would be. Uh, I don't love A&M like you. I think they're good, but – like they're a team that, like as talented as they are, they get speed bagged by the good, by the big dogs. So we'll see if they. I don't. I don't I'm just saying, like I think they'd have a better shot out of the other side because I, and that's mainly just because I think George is incredible. I think they're very good shot. They win the national title this yeah. year. So, um, but so I like uh, the team. I like. Nine, I like about the nine game. months. What about nine months? As much as I like Florida, I don't love that. I think that's kind of where they're going to be. Is yeah, nine. It'll push. It'll push. Cause I, I think them losing to Alabama and Georgia, there's a pretty good shot that happens. And then are they going to be, I mean, they have to go to LSU. They have to go to South Carolina. Like I know South Carolina is not good. I know Missouri's not good, but they still like, they're still SEC teams. You still got to play well. and. and and they're not locks to to beat all three. Like if you were to give me like even money that they beat the like four out of four on those weaker Kentucky type teams, 
Mm-hmm. I don't know if I love it. And then Florida State, like God knows, that could yeah. be chaos. Florida I State think, in, in the I rivalry think game. Ad, is... I take I take nine wins because I think I see them beating. And I'm not even that high on this Florida team, but it's not that I'm not high on this Florida team. The thing is, I don't know. Like I think you you have a very good shot of pushing it. So it's yeah, like, yeah. Huh, do you want to lock yourself into a bad? Place? I'm so much higher on on Georgia than than I am Florida. So that's kind of I think. I come off as like I'm low on Florida, which I'm not. I'm just very high on Georgia this year. Um, but looking at that, like I don't see them losing another game outside of Georgia and uh, and Bama. I think their biggest test is going at LSU, which will be mm-hmm. a tough game. Obviously, Death Valley at night is is um, a rocking environment, a very hard to play, probably the hardest in, in football to play at. So for that reason, I probably wouldn't take it either because I think that's tough. And then – Playing playing SEC opponents every week is not easy. Like Kentucky, to my, like Tennessee is never a, like Tennessee will fight them. It's like, traveling to Kentucky is always tough. Uh, I, Missouri is Missouri is actually not going to be that bad this year. Um, Missouri's not bad. Not bad and so it's just tough when you're playing when you when you're playing in and out like a lot of good teams. Like it's easy to drop one. You what I what I will one. think what I will say about Florida is I think they're going to come in as big monster dogs against Bama. And if they're like plus 250 type number, like 300, like I think that's not a horrible take. Because yeah, I think they home. can beat Al- I think they can beat Alabama this year. That's, that's, that's kind of my we'll thought. Those, I don't know if we'll get those odds. At, at, in uh, if they if they don't make it like nice, like it have to be at yeah, like probably be nice, 220-ish plus 220 yeah. and over. But like, I think we might be able to get it, honestly. So yeah, we'll see. Is it up actually? Like we could, it might be up already. We'll see. Um, well, I want to get into like games now. It's just, but yeah, uh, it's hard. if we're gonna feature, it like we'll feature it when it happens. Like we'll talk about it. But uh, I don't. I think the defense is gonna be far, far better than it was last year. I think they have a lot of talent. And I yo, it's up by the way. I'm just gonna tell you it's up, and it's at plus three seventy five. What? Two or three, plus three seventy five, three hundred seventy five. Well, I would take that on the spot right now. And it's just, I think I don't. I think Florida's a good team. It's like they, it's I not, think they're going to be able to test teams because they're going to be able to keep the ball away from people. And you know, if their defense is just better, and and who knows, the fact that they were scoring in like two seconds last year because Pitts and Tony were big play machines like that hurt the defense too it's like that's true i don't i think the team is a little better constructed to do certain things and not better like last year's team was probably better but that was like obviously a great team last year it's not like, team that played that probably played alabama the the closest in the country so they definitely did and they close. and they shouldn't have lost the other two in my opinion i think they were better than AM and certainly better yeah. than lsu that was just chaos yeah, that's um. So I don't. I mean, as I look in, I I'm not like in love with like prop Florida props because I, again, like what we talked about. I just it's mainly because George is a machine this year. It seems yeah, like. Yeah, I but. think we take. I think we take Iowa State there because playing the Big Twelve is a, a. I know we talked about the Big Twelve being a little bit more chaotic, but the Big Twelve isn't like as much of a grinding schedule as the SEC is. No, it's not. Um. And you got to be ready to play good football every week in the SEC. And and I like Florida, but nine wins is a decent. I actually, I'm honestly warming up to it the more I talk about it because I, I think they have a chance to beat Bama too. Um, but yeah, so I'm not going to give it out because I, I again, I'm just, I need to see what Emory Jones has. If Emory Jones is a decent quarterback for them, like I'm, I actually am excited about this Florida team, but I need to see that first. Um, yeah, no, I, I really like what they – I'm just – I'm excited because I think the defense is going to be far better than it was. And, yeah, I agree. And I think the fact that they're going to run the ball will certainly help them. So, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I love Dan Mullen, too. I, I know you like you do your rant to whatever you do, but uh, – Okay, yeah, well, I, I think, like, that. every year he's made this team better and he's bringing them back to being a super competitive team. You – you don't get that. You don't mean you feel like they were like good with must champ and strong. Like those two did a horrible job there. So yeah, I just, I feel I, like you're not giving them nearly enough credit for bringing them back to 
to be yeah. able to Yeah, no, I, I, will, I will say Dan Mullen has done a very good job at Florida, like kind of br- bringing them back from a little bit tougher with uh, Muschamp and McIlwain. That, that was – McIlwain, you throw him in there too. He's that bad. was – that was a that was not a great era between Dan Mullen and Urban Meyer. Dan Mullen did very well in Mississippi State. He has a good track record. It just to me it looked like it got a little off the roads last year when he had a really good team, and you kind of like just like kind of like panic mode against A and M and they lose. And he starts complaining about it not being fair, and then he 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 gets guys like just completely losing their composure against LSU, and then they just didn't compete in the bowl game. Uh, and they're fighting Missouri at halftime. It just I, it seemed like it just was like he kind of like lost a little bit of control over that team. And you can't that do might that. be fair. When you when you're trying to lead 18 to 22 year old men, young men, like you can't be participating in that bullshit. And he and he was. Yeah, um, that's 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 a fair criticism. Like it did seem like some of his off the field like demeanor. And that was such a talented team last year. Like, realistically, you could argue he underperformed with that team. Last cool. year. he's a little squirrely. That's fair. He, he, I mean, he shouldn't have lost a And M. He shouldn't have lost LSU. That team could have easily been in the playoffs with just losing to Alabama in the yep. championship game. And so it was a little bit of an underperformance. And what I see is just a, a downward trend. Like last, year, like they played bad football towards the end of the year. They lose to LSU. They lose to Bama. They lose to Oklahoma in the bowl game. I'm not putting too much. Oh, but I'm that's not... like acting like the Bama loss was a bad loss. That was probably the best game they played. That's probably fair, but I just it seemed like they were kind of trending not in the best direction, and I don't. I I think they lose a lot of guys on that offense side of the ball. So we'll see. I think he has a good chance to prove me wrong with Emory Jones if he can if he can get that offense going. They're obviously a very talented football team, and we're gonna we're gonna be featuring them in a lot of different bets, especially with that Florida Bama game. And so we look forward to break that down for you guys. And once again, we appreciate you guys listening to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Uh, we encourage you guys to just let us know. Just shoot me a Twitter DM. Shoot me a comment in the YouTube channel. Um, check us out on Apple Podcasts. All the usual. We appreciate the, so the support you guys have given it to us. And, and we love doing this. So we appreciate you guys kind of tagging along for the ride. And we'll talk to you guys in the next episode with another team preview. Peace.